the Sikorsky Boeing SB-1 Defiant is the Sikorsky aircraft and Boeing entry for the United States Army's future vertical lift program, succeeding the Joint Multi-Role (JMR) initiative. It is a compound helicopter with rigid coaxial rotors, powered by two Honeywell T-55 turboshaft engines. It first flew on 21 March 2019. Sikorsky Aircraft and Boeing are jointly producing a medium-lift size demonstrator they named SB-1 Defiant, also widely known as SB-1, for Phase 1 of the program. Originally planned to fly in late 2017, its first flight was delayed in April 2017 to early 2018. Once flight testing begins, the aircraft will be evaluated by the Army for further development. Sikorsky is leading the development of Phase 1 with an aircraft based on their previous Sikorsky X-2 design. Boeing plans to let Phase 2, which is the mission systems demonstrator phase. The Boeing Sikorsky team is seen to have an advantage with their large industrial base that may result in wider support from Congress. Their transport helicopters are the most used in the Army currently. Up to 2013, Sikorsky and partners have spent $250 million on X-2 and Raider. The team and aircraft will be separate from the S-97 Raider. The team feels confident in the SB-1 Defiant and is paying for more than half of its design costs. The last project the companies teamed up for was the Ross 66 Comanche, which started in the 1980s and cost $7 billion before being cancelled in 2004. They say the factors outside their control, like budget cuts, requirement creep, and a long development period caused problems with the Comanche, and not team dysfunctionality. Under the Comanche program, each company built different parts of the aircraft. For JMR, employees from both companies will work together. The team named the suppliers in 2015. Swift Engineering Incorporated supports the program with a major portion of the airframe structure designed and manufactured at the company's facility in San Clemente, California by an integrated team of Swift and Boeing employees. The timeline for the first flight has slipped several times. Originally scheduled for 2017, delays arose due to a requirement to implement automated fiber placement blade manufacture at the request of the U.S. Army. Further delays resulted in the first flight slipping past summer 2018. Dynamic systems like turboshafts, transmission, and rotors were scheduled to be tested at West Palm Beach, Florida, by the end of October 2018, before ground runs in November, then first flight to reach 200 knots within six months. The first prototype was unveiled in December 2018, and the first flight was pushed to sometime in early 2019. Ground runs began in January 2019. 15 hours of ground tests were needed before the first flight. The first flight took place on 21 March 2019 at Sikorsky West Palm Beach site in Florida. In the summer of 2019, flights were suspended to address a bearing issue with the main rotor. Flight testing resumed 24 September 2019. The aircraft reached a speed of 211 knots during level flight in October 2020. By December 2020, the demonstrator had logged 26 flight hours and 31 flights over the 21 months since first flight. Sikorsky and Boeing state the design is to have a cruise speed of 250 knots, but less range due to using the old T-55 engine. A new engine, the future affordable turbine engine, FAT, is to meet the radius requirement of 229 miles. Compared to conventional helicopters, the counter-rotating coaxial main rotors and pusher propeller offer a 100-knot speed increase, a 60% combat radius extension, and 50% better performance and high-hot hover performance Sikorsky has said that the X-2 design is not suitable for heavy lift size, and instead suggests the CH-53K for heavy lift and tilt rotor for the Ultra class. However, Sikorsky plans to build the 30,000-pound class, JMRTD, with the cabin 50% larger than the Black Hawk, at full scale to remove doubts about the scalability of the X-2 technology. Sikorsky Boeing states the SB-1 will be quick and nimble, with fast acceleration and deceleration, fast side-to-side -side movement, and the capability to hover with the tail up and nose down. The Defiant demonstrator will be powered by the Honeywell T-55, which powers the CH-47 Chinook. It will be slightly modified to better operate at slower propeller speeds, down to 85% RPM after a decade of combat from Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, the U.S. Department of Defense found that the U.S. Army's rotorcraft fleet was wearing out. Combat operations made the helicopters fly five times more often than in peacetime. Manufacturers have been remanufacturing and upgrading existing families of aircraft without creating original platforms. After a decade of combat from Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, the U.S. Department of Defense found that the U.S. Army's rotorcraft fleet was wearing out. Combat operations made the helicopters fly five times more often than in peacetime. Manufacturers have been remanufacturing and upgrading existing families of aircraft without creating original platforms. 
The Future Vertical Lift FVL, concept is to create a new rotorcraft that uses new technology, materials, and designs that are quicker, have further range, better payload, are more reliable, easier to maintain and operate, have lower operating costs, and can reduce logistical footprints. FVL is to create a family of systems to replace most Army helicopters. The joint multi-role JMR phases will provide technology demonstrations. JMRTD will develop the aerial platform. JMR Phase 1 will develop the air vehicle. JMR Phase 2 will develop mission systems. The Army plans to acquire as many as 4,000 aircraft from the FVL program. The Army started an FVL engine program in 2016. Future Vertical Lift was established in 2009 as an initiative, not yet a solution, by the Secretary of Defense to focus all DoD vertical lift capabilities and technology development, as well as retaining long-term engineering capabilities. In October 2011, the Deputy Secretary of Defense issued the FVL Strategic Plan to outline a joint approach for the next-generation vertical lift aircraft for all military services. The strategic plan provided a foundation for replacing the current fleet with advanced capability by shaping the development of vertical lift aircraft for the next 25 to 40 years. It indicates that 80% of decision points for the DoD vertical lift fleet to either extend the life, retire, or replace with a new solution occurring in the next 8 to 10 years. Implementation of the FVL strategic plan which will impact vertical lift aviation operations for the next 50 plus years. The U.S. Navy is a partner to the Army on the effort, so a derivative of FVL may be used in the Navy's MHXX program to replace the service's MH-60s or helicopters. Although requirements are still being refined, the notional concept for a new aircraft must reach speeds of 230 knot, carry up to 12 troops, operate in high hot conditions at altitudes of 6,000 feet and temperatures of 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and have a combat radius of 263 miles, with an overall unrefueled range of 527 miles. Mission sets are to include cargo transport, utility, armed scout, attack, humanitarian assistance, medical evacuation, anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare, land-sea search and rescue, special warfare support, vertical replenishment, airborne mine countermeasures, and others. The FVL family of aircraft will be required to have either optionally piloted or autonomous flight capabilities. In March 2013, the Army asked the industry to submit proposals for an effort called the Alternative Engine Conceptual Design and Analysis. Although formal requirements for the FVL family of systems had not yet been set, they will need to have hover, speed, range, payload, and fuel efficiency characteristics beyond any current rotorcraft. This may require an aircraft that can hover at 10,000 feet and cruise at 30,000 feet. Capabilities include good hover maneuverability at high altitude. The engine will require alternative advanced engine power system configurations that enable enhanced mission capability, such as improved time on station, increased mission radius, and quieter operation. Due to the different configurations of the airframe, power outputs from 30 kW to 7,500 kW are being studied. One to four companies can be awarded a contract with work completed in 18 months. Lockheed Martin is developing a single common mission system that could be integrated into FVL light, medium, heavy, and ultra-heavy aircraft. The system could save the Army billions of dollars over the course procurement and sustainment, eliminating the need to train maintenance staff, trainers, and personnel in multiple systems. One component is a helmet derived from the one used on the F-35 Lightning II, using distributed aperture technology that uses integrated sensors to enable pilots to view through the aircraft.